Ooh, yeah. Gavin, the yeah. knives are out. <laughs> See the guy who told everybody they had to stay home during COVID, and then he exactly. went to some lobbyist dinner with, what, 25 of his best yeah. friends? So they were yeah. hanging out, having a good time. This was the I number mean, one lockdown state. That's a truth. Does he have a mirror? Oh, yes, he does, because we've seen his hair. <laughs> Ooh, yeah. Gavin, the yeah. knives are out. <laughs> I mean, I mean, he makes it know, easy. He I mean, makes it easy. Come, come, Take care of yes. your own house before yeah, you start yeah, talking I mean, about other people. Gotta go. Time for a commercial. Bill Maher found himself in an uncomfortable situation on his show, Real Time with Bill Maher, during a heated debate with a couple of conservative panelists. The exchange became so intense that Maher decided to cut to a commercial break, seemingly to avoid the ongoing argument. It was clear the discussion wasn't going in his favor, and the panelists left him in a tough spot in front of his own audience. Now, let's take a look at the clip from Real Time, where Mahar appears to be caught off guard and chooses a commercial break to step away from the debate. ...of your state as, as a primary state is that it's not diverse, so it doesn't really look not like... Not diverse. ...look, look we, like America. We have the highest voter turnout in the country. South Carolina's diversity? Uh, look, South Carolina has about 15% voter turnout. What's the point of diversity if you don't let anybody vote, if nobody comes out to participate? We have rich, we have poor, we have black, we have white, it doesn't matter. Everyone in New Hampshire participates in the process. Well, I mean... I'll take, I'll put my diversity against I, South Carolinas any day when you actually look at who's actually voting and participating. I, the only black you have there is a bear. <laughs> I don't, I don't, you, it's a very white state. No, no. Oh, sure, of course. Okay. Oh, yeah. Okay. Sure. But I'm just saying, but that's... that's but isn't that, it about who participates? To... Isn't it about actually having a primary? Like I said, the Democrats likely aren't even going to hold the primary in South Carolina. So what's the point of diversity if you don't let people participate? I mean, they say that we, well, we subvert the vote by asking people for an ID. They subvert the vote by not even letting them show up. In South Carolina, they ended up not holding a primary at all, effectively pushing Joe Biden aside even though it seemed clear he didn't want to step down from the presidency or pass the nomination to Kamala Harris. It felt like the message to Democratic voters was, your new candidate is Kamala Harris, and you must vote for her. Not because of any significant policy positions she holds, which still remain somewhat unclear, but simply because she's not Donald Trump. Many well-known figures like Obama, Gavin Newsom, and others began endorsing her, along with commentators like Bill Maher, saying, I'm voting for Kamala Harris because Donald Trump is a threat to democracy. It all seemed to fall into place easily. The Democratic Party's ability to rally their voters behind a candidate, even with limited policy focus, almost looks like masterful marketing. Some might even wonder if there's a kind of deeper strategy involved as their supporters consistently follow the party's lead, reinforcing the notion that they're being treated as though they don't need to question control. it. And here's the most important part. I can't help you, Bill. I'm from Massachusetts. I'm not following this argument, but I'm go from ahead. Massachusetts. I'm from Massachusetts, and we, we used to refer to New Hampshire as Kentucky and New England. So that's... <laughs> really? What? Massachusetts, <laughs> right? Coming from Massachusetts, give me a break. Why? Why is New Hampshire the fastest yeah, growing state in the Northeast? That's Come on. not fair. That's not Come on. I didn't say I agreed with it. It's just, that was what we used to say. If you're enjoying this content, don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to the channel. Your support makes a big difference. Now let's dive back into the video. <laughs> Great segue. Go California Governor Gavin Newsom announced that he plans. Oh yeah, I read this to travel to states where freedom is most under attack. I don't know, well, would this strategy help Democrats? I, 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 I don't know about A few about years ago, the California legislature banned state money going to travel to states that had so-called anti-LGBTQ laws. Mm -hmm. So you couldn't have the sports teams, you couldn't have state officials going to other states that had controversial laws. And just a couple of days ago, the, one of the leading legislators who supported this said, it's not working. Yeah. And we have to repeal this because there's too much business going on across the country. We have to travel. It's interesting to note how some progressive states like California and leaders like Gavin Newsom enforce travel bans to states with anti-LGBTQ laws. Yet at the same time, they engage in business relationships with countries like Saudi Arabia, where being gay can lead to severe punishment. The contradiction is pretty striking. On one hand, they take a strong stance on LGBTQ rights domestically, but on the other, they overlook these issues when it comes to international business dealings. 
It's ironic to see leaders who advocate for progressive values at home while maintaining ties with countries that enforce such harsh policies. It just highlights the complexities and contradictions in how these issues well, are handled. And it would lead to a civil war. I mean, if you can't and, even... And we're also making it very personal. You remember the civil war, what it was called, the war between the right. states? Yeah. We're making it very personal between states. Like, your state is... You mean New the Hampshire? Is kind of, I'm not sure where you're going. Right, is kind of purple now, right? I mean, it's... A little more red than purple, but yeah, we always get I mean, stuff done. Yeah. Right, I mean... Yeah. Well, here's but, the thing. He's talking about freedom, less states that are less free. Isn't he the guy who told everybody they had to stay home during COVID and then he exactly. went to some lobbyist dinner with, what, 25 of his best yeah. friends? So they were yeah. hanging out, having a good time. This was the I number mean, one lockdown state. That's a trust. Does he have a mirror? Oh, yes, he does, because we've seen his hair. <laughs> Ooh, yeah. Gavin, the yeah. knives are out. <laughs> I, mean, I mean, he makes you know, it easy. I he mean, makes it easy. Come, come, Take care of yes. your own house before yeah, you start he, talking I mean, about other people. Yeah, okay, he owns It's surprising that. to see how much Bill Maher's audience is receptive to this perspective. I would have expected a different reaction, similar to what you might see on The View, if someone made a statement like this. The audience would likely express shock or disapproval. Typically, there's strong support for measures like lockdowns to protect vulnerable populations, such as the elderly. It seems like this particular audience is more aligned with a conservative viewpoint, which is unusual for Mahar's typical crowd. Normally, I'd expect them to back Bill Maher, but in this case, it's clear that many in the audience are not on his side. Okay. To lock down his state. Yeah. Um, among, he, he, the, among the political peccadilloes, I, I put it about thousandth down on the list. It wasn't, it wasn't his finest moment, but really, Bill Maher come on, if, if that's all you got on him. Segment. No, how about the oh, schools? No, it's about the millions of people getting his back yes. to schools. Uh, how about the businesses? I, 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 I'm so strong. 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 I'm New Sears ticket is being I, I yeah. no, 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 I can't run. Time. Before anybody says break. anything about immigration it's again. It's interesting to remember, see I was the shift in the so audience's response. So you can't response. run? No, I can't. Oh, Especially when it comes to That's why you're so delightfully honest. I thank you all for being here. Got to go. Time for a commercial. ...by the discussion and made a quick exit. Let me know in the comments what you think about this episode of Real Time with Bill Maher and how the conversation unfolded. Do you think the guest's reactions surprised him? And what are your thoughts on how the debate played out?